Hey y'all, what's up? Jamie, that's me here. Welcome back to the channel. Listen, I want to go ahead and do my quick review on SWV and Escape, the queens of R&B. There were a few things that took place. <sighs> Child, some things that went viral, but we are going to chit chat about it. All right. So Tasha goes to meet up with Taj. All right. And Taj says that Destiny Child, Destiny's Child used to always find them when they were on the on, on tour or whatever. And I think she said that they would like sign autographs and they would hang out with them, spend time with them, all that good stuff. I never knew that. That's good to know where uh, Taj and Tasha ended up meeting up. It looks like they met up in some type of museum. That's out there in Tennessee somewhere. And I don't think I've ever been to this museum. It kind of makes me think of the museum a little bit uh, in Washington, D.C., but a much, much smaller version. Because, you know, the one in D.C., which I love so much, it has different levels. I love how you start at the bottom. And it's about, like, you know, our history, slavery, all of that. And then as you go up, you know, it gets more and more, I guess you could say modern. You know, it goes through all the, the past, you know decades or whatever the case is girl a range of years but either way it's pretty dope right and they do have an area where it's like dedicated to um you know singers performers entertainers all of that so that's kind of where they were and they saw the different you know things on the wall and stuff they saw themselves and it seems like Taj really took Tasha there because she wanted her to kind of see like her legacy like girl we're very important and this is how important it will be for us to do this together so it seems like Taj brought Tasha there to kind of make that type of impression on her all right now she wants them to work um to work things out when it comes to Tasha and Tasha's sister Tamika this is what Taj is hoping for okay Tasha says that she thinks that her sister body shamed her and so you know Miss Taj over there girl like body shamed you how she was like girl she was over there talking about my booty she said yo booty she was like girl yeah you know because it's been known that my booty has been the flattest when it comes to the group and then Tasha said girl I know y'all not over there fighting over no booties now nah, girl and then he'll go to me uh Miss Tasha told me say uh-uh girl it got more to do to do with that than that. You know what I'm saying? It's about the disrespect for my mama as well. And, you know, I don't really appreciate that. I don't like that grown play like that when it comes to my mother. All right? So that is what Miss Tasha was over there telling Miss Taj. Let's see what else uh, she was over there saying. So Tasha, yeah, she says that um, she's not dumb. All right, or at least this is what Taj says. Taj says that she's not dumb. Y'all got more SHI going on than what you telling me, okay? And then Tasha like, girl, nah, no, we don't. And she's like, all right, nah, it is more. I don't think it's about the disrespect for your mother because if you ask me, girl, you had been acting funny with your sister, and I feel like, girl, you probably was acting funnier with your sister before the whole body shaming statement or whatever was going on, okay? So, girl, y'all been had y'all mother issues because that's just how y'all is. For real, for real, okay? And I do blame that raggedy mama, but that's just what I say, all right? So, <clears throat> Uh, let's see. So then this is when Tasha decided to open up to Taj about her getting that solo record deal, the gospel deal, from my understanding, and how she's not going to be in fear this time when it goes to pursuing what it is that she wants when it comes to this solo album. And I just kind of feel away a little bit because I was like, girl, what do you mean in fear? You wasn't in fear the last time. So why the hell is you talking about you in fear this time? You did the album from my understanding. The issue is that the album never came out. But you did the album, so I don't think that was fear at all. So what what is you saying? And even if there was a bit of hesitant hesitancy for you to step outside of Escape and do that album, you still did that album. So what are you talking about when you say fear? What are you saying? Okay, girl, go away from us with this, okay? Um, now when Taj is like, so girl, is you finna lead a group or what you finna do? And she's like, girl, listen, it's not that I'm really leaving a group. You know what I'm saying? She don't really say that she gonna lead a group. She just talk about how she gonna have some freedom. And I'm like, girl, B.I.T., the way you be acting, girl, you been here all the freedom. So what the fuck is we talking about now? You know what I'm saying? Go like, bye, 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 Tasha, girl. Go over there with yours, all right? Now, Coco decides she finna link up with two of her good little besties, all right? And this is where she lets us know, the audience, that she was actually diagnosed with bipolar depression a while ago. And she says that um, she knew she had something going on with her when she had thoughts of actually unaliving somebody all right so she had to go out and seek some help got that help and things have been better for her but it's still been you know a process okay she still has her phases or whatnot but for the most part she's better than where she was and what I'm really liking about this episode I don't I mean not the episode but the season I really don't know what I was expecting y'all but I love when they just open up and tell us more about their life that we didn't know 
You know what I'm saying? And they may have mentioned it in like the previous time, the previous shows that they've done, but I just don't recall. So I appreciate the refresher and just letting us in on your business and that it's just not all about music. Like it's giving this is a real reality show that could go on to get another season and not be a limited edition. Like, girl, what is y'all going to give us next season? Girl, it's giving us a little bit of housewives how they used to be back in the day. The problem is I am afraid that the longer they do, because I feel like they are going to want another season. So if they get a season two, okay, cool. But if they get any more seasons after that, I feel like these groups are likely going to break up, break up because you can't be on these reality shows and not have some type of drama. And even if the drama starts off small, based on how people handle things, it can lead to something much, much bigger. So I like I want to see more of it after this season wraps, but I. I don't know if it's even the, in their best interest to do so. You know what I'm saying? So we'll just have to see how that plays out. Now, I will say this. If Tasha and Tamika are still not on good terms by the time this, this season ends, which I don't believe that they are, girl, I will say that I would like to see another season to see if they're going to come back together at some point. And then if y'all going to let us in on Tasha gospel career, then it's kind of like I still want, would not mind seeing how that goes for her. And seeing if Escape is really the problem or if Tasha is really the problem if the album don't really go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I would not mind following the ladies for yet another season. So hopefully we could get that up out of them, okay? Now let's get to Tamika and her mama because her mama that came over to the house, girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. Her mom and came over to the house. So Tamika's mom comes to the house and her mom is like, you okay? Are you fine? And Tamika said, well, I'm glad to see you. Her mom said, are you sure? Are you sure you're glad to see me? And then she says, yeah. And then her mom said, well, girl, I'm glad to see you too. I'm only glad to see you if you're glad to see me. Now, if you ain't glad to see me, then I'm not glad to see you either. I just showed up for the camera time. Uh -huh. Exactly, girl. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess we see each other. Now, what you in here doing? Oh, okay. So you cooking. Okay, so you done already fixed our place. Okay, okay, well then we can sit down because you know I came over here on an empty stomach, so I am hungry. Okay, yeah, make sure you put enough greens over there on my plate. Thank you. Uh huh, sit it down right here. It's what it was given. So Tamika says she wanted to clear things up with them. And her mom says, listen, you know, the last time that we talked, girl, I'm going to tell you right now, like, girl, I was heart to the broken. That's what I was. Then she asked her, listen, I want you to sit down here. I want you to tell your mama, girl. What's it, what's going on with you? What's going on with me? And what's going on with your sister? Like, what is the beef, girl? What's the problem? So then Tamika says, well, mom, I just want you to know, girl, that, you know, because Tamika wasn't even looking at her or nothing. Tamika was just like, I just want you to know, mama, that, girl, you know, you just be out here, you know, you be... You be showing favoritism and stuff like that. Like, this is what you be giving to me. Like, this is how I be feeling. I, who show favoritism, Tamika? I show favoritism, Tamika. How do I show favoritism, Tamika? And Tamika was just like, because, mama, you show favoritism because every time I try to express myself, you know what I'm saying, you let her express herself. But when it comes to me, you don't let me express myself. Girl, the girl couldn't even say anything after you allow her to express herself okay before her mama jumped in therefore proving the point that you never let her express herself then the mama talk about some well i let her express herself because she don't sit up there and talk to me no any kind of way and you know what else she don't do she don't sit up there and disrespect the hell out of me the way that you be up there doing okay do you understand what because i'm your mama do you understand what i'm saying she don't do me like it is that you do me that's why i let her get away with everything because you think that you could just run a muck up in here. You're not going to run that damn muck because I am the muck. Do you understand? Don't play with me, little girl. So that's how her mama was coming off, right? So um, I just feel a way about the whole disrespect thing because I'm like, how did she disrespect you? I don't think that woman did. So, so was she disrespecting you because she was correcting you? She was pretty much calling you out? I mean, she's grown. I feel like it's okay. Like, I think it's okay to let your parents know when they be wrong as hell. See, y'all be trying to hold on to this time. I'm your mama. I'm your mama. Girl, at some point, your kids need to be able to have an honest conversation with you, especially when they grown as hell, girl. What else, what else is it giving? You know what I'm saying, girl? Y'all be loud and wrong, loud and wrong. But because y'all the parents, people supposed to just sit back and be like, okay, you right, you right, you right, you right. No, but you be wrong, okay? You be wrong sometimes, ma'am. So then, um... 
Yeah, so then, uh, yeah, uh, she mad at Tamika, basically, because Tamika told her, mom, this was when Tasha was at the house, and they were getting into it, this was a flashback. So Tamika was like, mom, the bottom line is, girl, you not the fifth member of Escape. Basically trying to tell her, you always jumping into the business. You feel what I'm saying? Like, y'all always getting into the middle of what the hell going on with Escape. And a lot of times when you jump into the business, you ain't jumping into the business to help us like Tiny Mama did. Tiny Mama hopped in the business to give us a check. You over here hopping in the business so that you can sit up here and complain. Like, what else? is going on mama you're not the fifth member girl we have enough problems already we don't need yours scoop back just a little bit please ma'am okay thank you so kindly it's what it's giving so then her mama feel away her mama tells her you're wrong you're wrong when you talk to me in that kind of way you're wrong when you stand up there and you disrespect me i am the fifth member okay i am I was the fifth member when I put that mic in your mother hand. That was me. I was the fifth member. I was the fifth member when your daddy walked up out of on us and didn't give up how we got it. Do you understand me, girl? I've been the fifth member, and I'm going to continue to be the fifth member. Those girls ain't my children, okay? But y'all my children, and I'm going to be the fifth member where I say I'm going to be the fifth member. And if I want to be the sixth, the seventh, eighth, ninth, and the tenth, that is what the... I'm going to do. And what are you going to do about it? Because like I said, I am the fifth member. Okay? So the whole time, Tamika just like, ma'am, no, you're not. No, you're not, mama, mama. No, you're not. You're not the fifth member. I'm with Tamika. Girl, like, you need to calm down, ma'am. Just because you put a mic in her hand when she was a kid and got shit to do with the group that she's in now. Personally, in my personal opinion, all right? It's good you put the mic, you know, you probably influenced her singing and stuff like that. So congratulations to you on that. When it comes to whatever's going on with the daddy girl, like that's not her problem that the daddy left you. Okay, that's not her problem. That's between you and the daddy. And the fact that you try to put that off on her, I feel like that is such a problem for me. And I feel like you put your big ass child um, in the middle of what you had going on. And I'm just like, mm mm. Like, is that why you treat your daughter the way that you do? Because you feel like if you would not have had her, the daddy would not have left? Is that what it's giving? Because I'm not understanding why you treat her the way that you do. But at the end of the day, it's not her problem. You misdirected anger, baby. That's on you and the dad. So let's not. That's an unrelatable issue that ain't got shit to do with her. Ain't got nothing to do with her. But it's giving every bit of an excuse for you to feel as though you're the fifth member of the group. You could never be. I need you to understand that, ma'am. Okay, just loud and wrong, loud and wrong. And then Tamika goes on to talk about how, you know, the situation with the dad, how her mom was a stay at home mom. Then when he left, she had to feed for herself and things like that. Her mama never got over it. And she doesn't think that her mama is still over it. Okay, and I'm not surprised. Okay, I, I'm, I'm sure she probably not still over it. Okay. Um, so then when it comes on, uh, comes to Tamika, Tamika pretty much tells her mom that she's the silent, um, no, no, I think her mama said that she's the fifth, I am the fifth member, I'm the fifth member when I try to keep you and Tasha together, which, whether she wrong or right, and then Tamika like, girl, no ma'am, you are the fifth member whenever you want to tell me that I'm wrong because I'm always wrong in your eyes, girl, like, that's what it's giving, like, don't play with me right now, mama, okay, then it said, then here go her mama's house, so, you know, you hurt her to her core, Girl, it's giving me me fouls. You really crushed Tasha. You hurt her to her core. And Tamika said, no, I didn't, girl. No, I didn't, girl. Scoot back. No, I didn't, girl. I ain't hurt that lady. That lady, all right. She fine. No, you did. You did. You said a lot of shit about her. Tamika, you said a lot of stuff. You talked about this lady husband? Girl, and I'm going to keep talking about his raggedy. And what's going on? Tamika said, uh, mama, I only talk about that man when he try to get into my business and what the I got going on, okay? That's the only time that I sit up there and talk about that man. So then her mama says, okay, now, well, if that's something that's going to help you sleep at night. And then Tamika said, if I can sleep at night, I, if I can sleep at night, girl, I know you're not talking about if I can sleep at night. First of all, this motherfucker in my business didn't turn around and took my motherfucking money, and you got the audacity to talk about whether or not I can sleep at night instead of asking whether he can sleep at night because he the one that took it. The mama said, girl, ain't nobody stealing that from you, and this is the motherfucking problem for me, okay? This is the problem for me. You say that you look out for your daughter, all of that, whether she right or wrong or whatever like that. I feel like if your daughter says that somebody took some money from her instead of you just shooting her down and telling her that they did not do it, because you think the world of Tasha 
and her husband or whatever the case is, <clears throat> you should be trying to get to the bottom of that. Get some clarity on that. Tell me, ain't nobody take no money. So are you saying that Rocky and Tasha didn't take the money because you took it? Girl, I'm just trying to understand. I'm not accusing. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm just asking questions, okay? I'm just asking the question. Okay, girl? So are you saying that they didn't take it because you take, took it? Like, girl, what's it giving? What is it going on? Who took it? Who got it? Who took it? Who got it? I'm just wondering, okay? So then, um, Tamika says, uh, what she says to him, she said, uh, she tells her mama, she was like, girl, as hard as you sit up there, you go for them. You know what I'm saying? Girl, them lemon heads, as hard as you go for them lemon heads, as sour as they are, girl, I wish that you would go hard for me in the same fashion, honey. Okay. So that's what she tells her mom. And then she also tells her, listen, you know, at the end of the day, it's about R-E-S-P-E-C-T, respect me, pay my dues, soft and nip, you finna respect me, period. This is what she's telling her mama now. She's saying that, girl, you're going to have to respect me. And if you cannot respect me, then, girl, I'm not finna be around for the bullshit because, girl, I'm tired to get beat up all girl i am exhausted y'all stop for to keep beating up on me girl no ma'am mm -mm. if that's what we finna do there girl i'm gonna fall back i'm not finna be uh -uh. i'm just telling you now i'm not gonna be around you oh it's like that but i want you to understand you came to my house girl and you had said that i was over there uh disrespecting you so i'm gonna tell you right now i apologize for disrespecting you but y'all not for to continue to sit up here and disrespect me no more, girl. We just stop for to do that, okay? You not for to sit up here and continue to disrespect me, girl. I will fall all the way back, understand. This is when the mom wanted to come up on her daughter, show her daughter some love, hug on her, and do all of this extraness and cry and tell her that if you feel like I've pretty much been more of a, a parent to Tasha or if you feel like I've uh, protected her more than I protected you, then I'm sorry, and it's like, girl, you know that. That's why you apologize. And you know that that's what you've been doing, okay? So anyway, that's what the mama said. She apologized. And I said, girl, y'all cool for the moment. For a limited time only, girl, y'all is cool for the moment. And then it's going to be some old FS because I feel like that's how y'all have always operated. I feel like the mama has always been on some bogusness. And I feel like Tamika has always had to be the one to come tell her mama and apologize first. And then they had this sentimental moment. And then there's some tears here or there. The mama may or may not apologize. And then they're back to normal. And then give it some more time. And it's going to be some other bullshit that's going on. Because that's how, I mean, that lady, I'm not, it's very awkward. Like, I'm not going to say this woman does not love her child i'm sure that she does she cares for her child she raised her child but it's either some envy going on or it's something that's going some resentment or somewhere happening within that mama and she always spews that out towards the daughter either that or tasha is great at manipulating and she's getting in her mama's head and really got her believing and thinking that her sister is one way when she's really another you know what i'm saying so yeah, I don't know, girl. Um, but this is where we at, all right? Now, let's get to Taj and Candy because they do link up. So, Taj tells Candy about Tasha getting this so meeting with Motown and getting this solo deal. So, Candy's like, oh, what? Girl, this ain't ever history repeating itself is what it's giving. She says, you know, it makes sense as to why she got this ego. And Taj's like, really? She's like, girl, yeah. She's like, she did that shit a few years ago. Like, well, you know, when she first got the deal, right? She started getting this big ego trying to act like she don't need us and just moving however the hell it is that she wants to move and then Taj was just like well B-I-T you ain't saying that but a word girl because you know I can relate right because you know Coco did this shit to us too yeah she did she did this shit to us too and girl I was sick I was pissed I was so mad at her but girl I just want you to know that I can relate but I'm gonna say this because this ain't really about my group girl it's more so about your group and your group over here cutting the food okay and I'm not gonna do this to jeopardize mine because I want the checks to continue to flow you understand okay so I'm not gonna say too much more about Coco I'm just gonna say what was facts all right and that was facts however I want you to know that girl Girl, I would love to have Tasha be a part of this, but B.I.T., she not finna stop the vision that we got in place, okay? Y'all have performed with Three's Company already. You know what I'm saying? So, um, <clears throat> y'all have already done that, so if she can't be a part, girl, she just can't be a part, and we're gonna keep that shit moving, okay? Period, all right? And you know what's so funny is I'm thinking about this. As Miss um, Miss Mama Scott sent up there talking about something, um, I am the fifth member. No, the fifth member is Tasha's ego, that's the fifth member. Because that motherfucker makes sure they show up every time and perform. Do you understand? Mm. And I don't mean perform using vocals. Hello? But that's the fifth member of the group. Period. But let's go ahead. 
and keep going. Let's get to Lily and her son because she meets with her son and she pretty much talks about like his career. He's an artist. He's talented. He's great. She's going to do her best to try and help him out with the industry stuff. But at the same time, she don't want him to rely on her. I don't blame her on that because one, she ain't trying to be his manager. Number two, she got her own goals and everything. And number three, it's probably going to be like you can get them in some doors, but you can't get them through all. It's just what it is. She could probably use her name to try and secure an interview here or there, but he's still going to have to ground it out and find his audience and build his audience. So I definitely understand her on that. You know what I'm saying? She trying to maintain the life that she got. He the one that's younger than her. So he got more energy than she does to really go out there and get the exposure he needs. Right. So <clears throat> that's what they got going on. She also talks about how she don't want her kids calling her by, the by her first name. But then she goes on to talk about the many faces of Sister Hot Pussy. And I'm over here confused. Like, girl, wait a minute. Not you over here talking about your erotical book to your child and you hunching and whatever the case the book going to be about. But your child can't call you by your name, Lily. You out your fucking mind. Girl, I'm not finna be sitting up here talking to my mama about no SEX, especially hers, and think that I'm not finna sit up here and call her by her first name, Leanne. Okay, girl, what does it get? What's Lily's real name? Is it Leanne? Girl, it's giving Lily. Okay, it's what you're going to be called by, girl. And if I'm not really calling you by your real name, girl, Lily is your nickname. And this and I, I'm going to call you back because you're not going to sit up and have no conversation with me about no SES because I'm not trying to see you in that position. Period, girl. I don't care what the book is about. Okay, don't tell me that I can't call you by your name and you over here want to talk to me about your sex. Okay, I see you who knew, not me. Who? Girl, no. Mm -mm. Period. But anywho, that's what they talk about. But, you know, Lily goes on to open up about her past life. And I just love her sharing her story so much because, you know... A lot of times you have these famous uh, artists and they may be one hit wonders or they may be one album wonders. I don't know, but they'll go away and you often wonder like, dang, what are they up to? How are they doing? Are they still in the industry? Are they able to write for people? Like, are they producing? What are they doing? Some people have to go out there and be under the radar and get actual jobs. And I'm sure some of them at this very moment are working from home, glad to kind of like be hidden a little bit to where a lot of people may not know them and they don't have to face some of the embarrassment that a lot of people like to spew out there for people that have to go and get you know jobs outside of the entertainment sector kind of like that actor from the Cosby show um I can't think of his name he was working in the grocery store somebody tried to clown him for him working in the store uh, grocery store I think it was Trader Joe's or something making an honest living but y'all tried to joke on that man but in all honesty it turned out to be a blessing for him because he ended up booking opportunities after that I know I saw him on power so <clears throat> With that being said, you know, people try to shame folks. And it's like, man, with that entertainment world, it's like you could be here today in a few months by the end of the year, girl, you're not even thought of. So that's just how it goes. So I appreciate Lily opening up, letting us know what she really went through as a real artist. You know what I'm saying? Kind of, you know, after the group broke up, she went and she lived in her mother car. Lived in her car, I think in 1998, not sure how long she did that, but she was living in her car and she would try not to go to sleep at night because she was afraid of somebody breaking in her car and probably violating her. So she would kind of like drive around New York all times of the night until like the morning time and then she'll go to sleep at the Yankee Stadium. So I just really felt bad for her on that. <clears throat> and she had kids. I, no, no, I think in 98, I don't think she had any kids. I'm not sure. Because then she talked about having kids at 15, 16 or something like that. At a young age, then her mom passed away, I believe, in her early 20s when Lily got to her early 20s. So I'm not sure how old she was or where her children were or if her children were with her when she was sleeping in the car. Not sure of the uh, of that range or whatnot. But, um, yeah, so that was interesting. Um, they did a flashback on Lily telling this story on, I believe it was Bethany Frankel's show, where she ended up telling the story about her history, where she slept at, all of that, what she, the rough time she went through. And when I was watching it, girl, I was looking at Coco, and I said, Coco, honey, you definitely had an attitude problem. Because it seemed like when Lily was up, her, up there telling her story, girl, you were not phased. I don't know if you've heard it all before or if um, you just was not featuring it. Like, I was like, girl, you could tell Coco got an attitude. She, when she Her face looked like it was just her lips look tooted up like girl you had an ego ma'am and I feel like that ego might show up slightly when it comes to your son but anywho let's keep going all right um let's get to Tasha who's in the studio working on her gospel music and I have to say I have to be honest it's giving cute it's giving cute I have to say it's a cute little ditty bop um it's cute you are everything everything whatever the song is it's cute okay then the husband walk in and the mood went south 
All right, the mood went down to the ground. I'm not even gonna hold y'all. All right, and then he get in there trying to joke around, talking about anime. Look here, listen here, anime. Uh, anime. Uh, listen, listen. Uh, uh, I need you to lay them tracks down, uh, anime, because we we got a lot of song. And I'm like, is you mocking him and me really believing that that's how you are? Yikes. Um, uh, but either way. Let's keep going. So Tasha tells Rocky about the rehearsal and uh, Tasha's still acting up, a acting up in the air. You know what I'm saying? At, like pretty much acting like it's up in the air for her. Like she don't know. She said Ta uh, Candy called her, hit her up, said, hey, SWV is trying to have this rehearsal and they're trying to, you know, nail some dates down. OK. And Tasha just like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I don't know. And I know I'm just Tasha. I'm getting irritated, girl. Either you do or you don't. It's really it's really not that hard. Right. Tasha is somewhat still affected by the things that her sister to me could do but she's more so leaning towards it she's upset with how she handled her mom not so much as how she handled her interesting so i just feel like you deflecting okay um if a bit sitting up there saying i stole their money bit i got a problem with you sibling or not girl that's a lot of racks and that's a big accusation don't lie on me so based on how you handling that does make me think that girl it could be a little bit of truth to it i don't know but for you to go on interviews and sit up there and say oh I like to keep family business in house, but then you're focusing on your issue with your sister by uh, by way of your mama. That's like, girl, that's not really keeping your business in your in the house because that's not what you told Taj. You told Taj that you don't like that she disrespected your mom, but you also didn't tell Taj what else your sister was accusing you of. See what I'm saying? You also sat down with the husband and the husband saying, you know, I don't think Tamika wants the group to get back together because, you know, she's accusing me of things and I forgive her for that. But I'm like, baby, she's not just accusing you. She's accusing y'all. <laughs> she's accusing y'all. And your sister is um, not trying to even address that or acknowledge that in all honesty. She wants to focus on the disrespect of the mom. And if she's not doing that, she wants to uh, flip it, change it, rearrange it and focus on Miss Candy Birds and deflect and focus on that. Some, some stuff that's so old, so old, so many years ago but that's just where y'all at okay um and then he's talking some he forgives her like i feel like he ain't got no choice but to forgive her because i mean it's a high probability that you did do it and that's just according to speak okay we don't know what happened i'm just telling you what it is okay this is an opinion not a fact but um yeah so then tasha tells him about how she has yet to um tell all the ladies about her solo album and I think he wants her to think about it. It's up to her or whatever. She says that she feels like every time she shares things with people, it never works out for her. Now, in my opinion, I do understand that. I do do. <clears throat> I definitely understand that. I definitely felt like for myself in, in my past, when I would share things, they would not come into fruition. But when I would hold them closer to myself, or I'll say this, either, <clears throat> excuse me, either I would share things and they would not come into fruition um, or I would share things and that person would try to go and do it before me. Okay. Um, and so I just start keeping things closer to my vest and doing it. And more th the more that I did that, the more things came into fruition. And it was a, a clear indicator that I already knew whenever I'm on some, that person would be like, Oh, I want to go do that too. I wanted to, they had no identity. They attached themselves to what I had going on, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. So I felt like I could relate if you want to hold some things to yourself. Cause I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you, I mean, people do pray against you and, and, what, and what your goals are and stuff. Like, I mean, it's just what it is. I did, regardless of how Tasha has moved, I definitely understood that statement. But I do think she needs to get around to telling them because I believe the deal is locked in place now. You know what I'm saying? But those are my thoughts, all right? Um, what else? So Coco and her son, let's get to them. Let's have a conversation about that, okay? He's over there singing, getting his video together for his social media. The mama comes in and immediately tells him to shut all that noise up. I don't know about y'all. I immediately got offended when she told him to shut all that noise up. For me, it just makes me think that when I think of Coco, I really think that Coco believes that, she, and I'm not saying she's not, but I really believe that Coco believes that she's that girl and that she is the vocal Bible, in my opinion, right? That's what I think she believes. So I feel like nobody, can, Coco thinks nobody can out sing her and I'm not saying that she shouldn't. But with that type of ego, I feel like she might be extremely harder on her son or because his vocal range doesn't match hers, she might see him as not being successful in the arena that he wants to go into, which is music. So it's something about that when she walks in there and says, shit, all that fuss up. It, you are already trying to convince him to not go out and be a singer. You know what I'm saying? You already trying to convince him on that front, right? And then you come in here and tell him to shut all that noise up. Maybe I'm thinking too deep about it, but that's just what I got from it. And I ain't really like it. 
Then she sits down and talks to him. He tells her he doesn't want to go to dentistry school anymore. He wants to take a break. She's focused on him being a dentist. She wants for him what she wants for him. I immediately got irritated with that. You know, um, I feel like allow him the space and the time to, he's young. You know, a lot of kids are trying to figure themselves out 18, 19, 20, 21. Like, give him the time to figure that out. In my personal opinion, I do feel like college is going to be there. I've seen plenty of people in their late 30s, 40s deciding to go to college. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it just, it's like that. Some people go off and actually pursue the career that they want and they do well in it and still go back and be like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this degree because now I kind of want to do this over here. You know, so I just feel like give him that range to be able to do that for you to be like, I'm going to call mama, call grandma, because your grandma not going to like this. Who the fuck is she? Does she have a degree? Who the fuck is she to sit up there and tell somebody, like, what they, like, no. Y'all, you're not going to guilt trip me into doing that. Like, you're just not going to, if anything, you should be glad I'm saving you money in the moment. And you know what's crazy? I feel like a lot of kids don't have the opportunity to have a parent to pay for their college. So in my personal opinion, I feel like there are a ton of students in college going to college because that's what their parents want for them. And not that it's a bad thing, but I do believe that there may be quite a few students that may graduate from college, don't have a real job like they would want, and then they're sitting up there with all of these student loans. So I feel like they might have a bit of resentment towards the thought of, one, going to college and also being convinced that that's something that they should do when the opportunities really aren't out here. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it just depends on what you want to go for. Like, if you know you want to go be a dentist, go do that. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a doctor, OBGYN, whatever, go, like, go, like, do that. Sh you know what I'm saying? But if you decide that you want to wait two years, I feel like it's okay. I think it's okay to do that. A lot of times I hear stories about people being more successful in their late 30s and early 40s in life. You know what I'm saying? And there are, you know, those other individuals that's been extremely successful way, to, way ahead of time. But if he's battling with you for him to, like, just give me this opportunity, to just focus on my music and see what I could do with it, let him do it. I would love to see the dynamic of how it was with Tracy, the one that wanted to be a rapper. I wouldn't be surprised if she was like that with Tracy. And Tracy sat up there and proved her, proved to her like, nah, I'm that N-I-G-G-A out here, right? So now she brags, but it's a common thing that I think a lot of parents do where they want you to go to college because they feel like that's going to be a great backup plan, right? Um... Or a good fall. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't even want to say a backup plan, but that's a good plan A. Go to college because it often brings security. But I'm wondering, like, does it really? Because I've heard so many stories where people have went to co college, even Harvard, and still couldn't find jobs. You know? So I'm just like, eh. I mean, with the dentistry, though. He can, he can create his own um, dentist office. So that does give you range to do some things. But I just feel like let that boy do his thing for at least a year. I was thinking maybe two years, but he, he suggested a year. And with that, because he's only 19, you know what I'm saying? But uh, And if it doesn't pop how it needs to or if it's not progressing, then you need to go ahead and get in school. Because, listen, I don't know how much longer I can hold out and just make you and believe that you're going to really pop. You know, so I feel like there's nothing wrong with giving a time frame of when a person can, you know what I'm saying? Like, work on this, focus on this. I'm going to give you like a year and a half. I'm going to give you this right here. I'll take your gap year or gap years. And if this, this, and this is not lining up, baby, college is where you finna go. And lucky for him, his mom is going to be able to pay for that and take care of that for him, right? So prayerfully, he'll be leaving college with no debt, you know? So, I mean, it, it works differently for everybody. But for me, I see nothing wrong with the students, um, you know, taking a little break. You know, everybody does that. At least he ain't saying that he, it's not the direction because he may change his mind and go just be a medical doctor, right? But it's not that he is completely dropping out because you have some people that start college, right? And then by that second year, baby, going into a junior, I'm done. Either they flunk out or they drop out. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, hey, he could go. And then what happens if he's like, I told you I wasn't in it. And then he started flunking all his classes and you feeling like you wasted money. Then you're going to be mad as hell at him. So, I don't know. But, girl, either way, good luck. Okay, hopefully y'all figure that shit out. But let's keep going. All right. Um, I also hated to see him cry. I wanted to say that I felt really bad for him in that moment because it felt like he wasn't being heard at all. And it's like, I know you still see him as your kid, but it's also okay to listen to your child. Like, <laughs> he's sad in this moment, okay? It, like, hear him out. At least, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just blue ivy, girl, calm down, calm down. Give him a second, okay? Give him a second. Maybe he can show you a plan 
what his what his um uh, what you know what his one year plan is or something. I don't know. Y'all have figured it out, girl. But you know who? Let's get to SWV because they're in rehearsal. The managers need answers about this tour. All right. Escape comes through and they finally get Tasha to say yes. OK. She was very hesitant, but she says, yes, we'll see what this is going to be. So after they finally get Tasha to say, yeah, here go Candy Burr is talking about some fucking billing, meaning she wants to know who's going to get paid the most. So the manager is just like, listen, I think it's best that we co-headline. Now, of course, the person that headlines is the person that's going to get paid the more money. So I think y'all should co-headline and y'all should pretty much split this shit down the middle. Make a lot of sense to me because y'all don't even know if damn Tasha gonna be there or not so why should they give y'all more of the money y'all may have three damn members they got three members like why why is that y'all you and tiny sit up there talking about how y'all got y'all fans from real housewives or tv shows or what the fuck ever and and I'm just like, and what that's supposed to mean? Y'all, number one, you can't guarantee that all them fans really finna come out. You can't guarantee that y'all audience or the audience is going to consist of solely y'all fans. And I just don't think it's fair for y'all to get most of the money if y'all got, got a member that's in limbo and may not even show up. No, as much as I love Escape, and I've said this before, it will always be Escape for me because their music for me resonates more than SWV. I feel like there may be one or two songs with SWV, but in my household, I grew up listening more to Escape. So that's where I'm more drawn to. But although I like them a lot, I think that it's disrespectful in my personal opinion to not um, recognize the legacy and the iconicness of SWV. And really both groups. And I feel like shame on y'all that you guys are using your TV growth platform as an excuse to be able to receive more money when y'all group are, is in the worst position, in my opinion. And the entire uh, tour or the performance, the concert is going to be about legacy. Here's another thing I want to say. The songs that y'all going to be singing is old school ass songs, not new school. So why are y'all even bringing up the, the millions of fans that you got, especially if they knew y'all from TV? They don't even know y'all from back then. You see what I'm saying? So it's just not it's not clicking for me. I feel like a co-headline. I like that better. Now, at first I was kind of like, I don't know if SWV should be, you know, like the headline, because, again, that was me being biased, leaning more towards escape. But when I'm hearing that SWV has sold 30 million records, we're done. They open up the show like we're done. Like, that's just what it is. Period. Period. They open up the show. It is what it is. There's no more conversation. Um, so, yeah, I didn't like that. I was like, Candy, girl, we just got Tasha to say, yeah, and here you go throwing another damn curveball. Are you okay? You over here thinking about the money. Candy, you get all the money. What jobs do you not work, ma'am? Okay? I feel like Candy owns a piece of everything. Hell, she probably owns a piece of the company that come around and pick up my goddamn trash. Do you hear what I'm saying? She probably own all of them. You feel, girl, Candy probably got a stake in the damn power company. Feel what I'm saying, girl? I feel like Candy got so much money. You don't need, you don't care this much about no damn billing. You can't possibly. Not with all those fans you guys have from television. And if that's the case and you're focused so much on the television aspect, then how about this? How about you guys as different groups do a special VIP package, okay? Upcharge on the VIP package for the people that want to see Escape since you feel like y'all are going to have the more fans based on television. So maybe they'll pay that more money to come back there and see you guys and you can get a check that way. Uh huh? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know how it works. It's just the idea that I threw out there. Okay. But other than that, I want you guys to cut it the fuck out. All right. Now, Lily and Coco get the hell up and walk up off the table. Okay. They're like, girl, we about to go. Because do you know who the fuck we is, girl? Okay. Do you know who the fuck we is? Do you know what these vocals can do? Girl, you're not going to sit up here and play on my top. And I'm not going to let you play on my top. Girl, I'm just going to walk off on you. Y'all better figure it out ASAP. And I was a little pissed with candy because i'm like candy why are you bringing this up now if because she said something like you know well, that's not what we really thought about from the beginning well then why you ain't bring that up from the beginning if y'all just sat up here and had a meeting why didn't you discuss that at that meeting prior and you want to bring it up now and then when um what's her name taj acts like so so what are you saying what are you saying so are you saying you want you want y'all to get paid more is that what you're saying? Candy says, um, well, you know what I'm like. So let's say you got two different groups, right? And I'm like, yeah, bitch, we know that because y'all are the two different groups or the two different artists or whatever the case is. Like, 
Yeah, use y'all for an example. Okay, why are you using another example? Use y'all for an example. And you know, on the paper, on the form, you know, on the flyer or whatever, it got this person and then that person and then this person and then it's like real little names and then a big name and then you know at the bottom it got the other name and then it just get bigger and bigger as it go and then you know the other ones they get smaller and smaller and we just like, what the f what? Girl, when I tell you Taj was so confused, especially for a person that's been in the industry longer than Candy, she was like, what the fuck is she talking about? Girl, like Taj was so lost. So Taj said, so wait a minute, baby. Uh-uh, scoop back. So what you're saying is you want a bigger letter? Girl, I hollered. I holler, you want a bigger letter? Like, I'm I'm tickled because I'm like, Candy, I don't know what game you thought you was spitting, baby. <laughs> Taj was not flying with it, okay? It was not adding up. It was not correct, okay? It did not make any sense what you were trying to say. I was like, girl, what the fuck is you talking about, Candy? Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You was trying to hit a finesse right there, Miss Ken. All right. But anywho, I felt the way. I feel like SWV paid the way. So if that if y'all wanted to have a headline, headline, then yeah, we're gonna have to rock with SWV. Period. Whether you think they got the fans or they don't. BIT, what we not finna do is play on their tops like they didn't just fly over there to Africa and make six figures. Like we just not finna five, six, whatever it was. We're not finna play on their top like they didn't just fly out exclusively for one event and made all them racks. It wasn't even a concert. Like we not finna play on these ladies' tops. We know you worldwide, but clearly they are too. Like don't play on these ladies' tops like that. Okay. Um, I love y'all down, but I couldn't get with that escape. I'm not even going to hold y'all, all right? But that's all I got. Another cute episode, all right? I want you guys to go ahead. Let me know your thoughts about the episode. Hop down in the comments and share your thoughts. All of great, all of that. Um, like the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Definitely share the video. You know, all of that helps the channel, okay? We definitely want to grow. Want the videos to get into the algorithm and all of that. And, um, yeah. That's it. All right. Follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at Jamie. That's me. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.